Hello and welcome to the France Bank Catra interview. I'm Eduardo Quay. Should the West retaliate against Syria for what now appears certain was its use of chemical weapons last August 21st? That is the question that has been bedeviling Europe and the United States, with the British Parliament refusing intervention and the U.S. Congress scheduled to vote on the matter next week. As for the French, President Hollande has made it clear he favors intervention, but obviously France cannot go it along. For our guest today, the response is clear. No military strikes against Syria, whether or not Bashar al-Assad or anyone else use chemical weapons that could have killed as many as 1,500 people. I am speaking about Stephen M. Walt, professor of international affairs at Harvard University and a leading expert on the Middle East. He joins us from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Welcome to France Van Catre, Mr. Walt. As I said in my nice introduction... To be with you. Nice to have you. As I said in my introduction, uh, you have very uh, come out very strongly against any kind of intervention, even if these chemical weapons were used. Could you explain to us why? Well, there are two reasons. One, you want to intervene with military force only when there are vital national interests at stake. And in this particular case, it is not in America's interest, and I would argue not in France's interest, to get military involved, get militarily involved in the civil war that is happening in Syria. Uh, what is happening there is tragic, uh, but ultimately it is not a vital interest for either France or the United States. The second reason is that chemical weapons are something of a red herring here. Uh, tens of thousands of people have already died in Syria through the use of conventional weapons. Uh, and in most circumstances in the battlefield, actually high explosive and conventional weapons are more lethal than chemical weapons. So to focus solely on the way in which people are being killed and not on the actual carnage that's going on is essentially misguided or misdirected. The question we should be asking is, do we have a vital interest in intervening? And equally important, could military intervention actually make the situation there better? My judgment is, in fact, it would not. It could easily make things worse and end up bringing to power people who are, in fact, worse than Bashar al-Assad. It seems that the overriding argument, everybody agrees that uh, this is not about regime change, that uh, uh, a limited strike is not really going to change anything on the ground. But the overriding argument seems to be, if these weapons were used, we simply cannot let that happen without some sort of a response, because that will create a new threshold, and it will also send the wrong message to other countries, especially I think people are thinking of Iran. What do you say to that? Well, uh, the only reason we are really having this debate is because President Obama foolishly used the phrase red line uh, earlier in discussing the possibility of chemical weapons. This was not something he uh, thought about carefully beforehand. It was a rather off-the-cuff remark, and that has seemed to engage American credibility. The fact is chemical weapons have unfortunately been used on numerous occasions since World War I. Uh, Iraq used them in the Iran-Iraq War and also against the Kurds. Egypt used them in Yemen. Uh, the United States used things like white phosphorus during the Vietnam War. And so the idea that suddenly at this moment we have to go to war to protect a norm that has already been challenged in the past strikes me as unconvincing. It is also worth noting that countries are not supposed to go to war without United Nations Security Council approval, which we're clearly not going to get in this case. So we would be violating one norm in order to try and defend another, which seems a little bit inconsistent. But, but uh, the United Nations uh, Security Council, obviously, they, they can't go to that because it's just simply blocked. Do you think that Obama went to Congress to try to get some sort of legitimacy? And did he make the right decision in asking for a congressional vote? I think the Obama administration has managed to come up with a policy that will make almost no one happy. Uh, the hardliners in the United States don't think that the response is going to be strong enough or vigorous enough. Uh, opponents of action don't think the United States should be getting involved at all. 
By going to Congress, in fact, Obama has looked, I think, uh, somewhat weak and inconsistent. And the way Congress is now discussing this, they're going to give only very limited authorization. So if your purpose was to show how tough and resolute the United States was, uh, this action isn't going to accomplish that either. And again, I don't believe military force ought to be used unless you have a very clear objective, you're confident that force will succeed, and you know where this is likely to lead. And none of those conditions are satisfied in this particular case. Okay, let me go back for a moment to this issue of credibility because it seems to me that this is central to this debate. Roger Cohen, writing in the International Herald Tribune, says the following. It is the credibility of the United States as a European and Asian and Middle Eastern power that underwrites global security. Yet in your blog, very recently, you said that this argument about restoring American credibility, as you have repeated here, uh, in your blog you call it silly. Is, is it really a silly argument? Uh, I believe it is. I have great respect for Roger Cohen, uh, but this credibility argument has been used for decades to justify doing things that you can't justify on other grounds. Uh, if you just consider Barack Obama, right, he has escalated a war in Afghanistan. He has fired uh, or ordered the killing of uh, suspected terrorists with drones in a number of different countries. The United States has fought wars in Iraq, in Kosovo, and elsewhere. Um, the idea that American credibility is at stake at this uh, moment is, I think, uh, quite a silly one. Other countries around the world know that the United States is very powerful and know that the United States will act when its own interests are threatened. Uh, going to war in Syria doesn't affect that, but not going to war in Syria doesn't affect it either. It's not going to make Iran suddenly think it can get away with uh, anything it wants to do, particularly something that might threaten the United States or its close allies directly. So I believe in this case the credibility argument is something of a red herring, not very convincing, and certainly not a reason to go to war. Okay. You've also written and made a suggestion, uh, actually two suggestions. Number one, that uh, the United States go to the Security Council, even if it is certain of a Russian veto, simply to prove uh, that uh, Bashar al-Assad did use these chemical weapons to, to give out, put out the evidence that it has to that effect. And secondly, you've suggested that the United States uh, invite the European Union, Russia, China, Turkey, and even Iran to a diplomatic conference, as you put it, on Syria. Now, what would be uh, the purpose of such a conference? Uh, can, is there any possibility at all of a political solution at this point? Uh, I think a political solution would be very difficult. Uh, there's no question about that, particularly given the divisions that exist within Syria today. But the best solution for the Syrian people would be to end the civil war as rapidly as possible. And in order to do that, you're going to have to get a deal brokered by a number of countries, including Russia, including Iran, Turkey, and other interested parties. And it bothers me that we have been uh, thinking more about various military responses than trying trying to be creative and imaginative on the diplomatic front. In a sense, we are playing with the lives of the Syrian people by refusing to get serious uh, about diplomacy. I have no uh, guarantee that a diplomatic approach of the sort I've suggested would work, but it seems to me it's at least as likely to succeed as the course we're going down now, where even the Obama administration admits that using military force really isn't going to accomplish uh, you know, accomplish very much. And finally, by emphasizing diplomacy, even if it doesn't work, we will make it obvious to the rest of the world that we are not trigger happy, and we will make ob it obvious to the rest of the world that other countries, for example, possibly Russia, are the real barriers to a solution here. So we might get some political benefits out of that as well, even if diplomacy and negotiations don't work. But is there, is there any even the vaguest possibility of a political solution. Uh, Bashar al-Assad al seems to be gaining on the ground. The opposition uh, over the last year seems to have radicalized tremendously so that you now have very uh, uh, radical Islamic groups. Uh, there's really no one to replace Bashar al-Assad. Uh, the Russians seem not to want to do very much uh, diplomacy. Uh, what can, it just seems that there's no alternative. 
Well, well, at this point, I think it's clear that Assad cannot regain control over the entire country. Um, it also appears uh, in the current structure that the rebel forces are not going to be able to oust him very easily. And when you have a stalemate like that, and where both sides begin to realize that the prob uh, the prospects of an absolute victory are elusive, then you might have uh, the conditions for some kind of negotiated settlement, some kind of power sharing arrangement. That unfortunately also requires the United States and the European Union to uh, abandon the objective of overthrowing Assad completely. That's been the American position for now a couple of years, and it is unfortunately a barrier to a diplomatic solution. I'm no great fan of the Assad regime, but it seems to me if you want to end the killing, ending the war is the only way to do that. Okay, we're uh, running out of time, but I do want to ask you uh, a question. It has been suggested that this uh, prolonged war in Syria is actually uh, benefiting the United States. This is a very Machiavellian view in that it, uh, and you've referred to it in your blog, in that it uh, weakens Iran and weakens Hezbollah. Um, what do you say to that? Well, that argument has been made by a number of people, but I think what everyone has to recognize is that when you prolong a civil war, you also create the possibility that uh, increasingly violent and increasingly, increasingly extreme organizations ultimately come to power, groups that thrive in a condition of prolonged violence. And it is not going to be good for anyone in the region to have Syria become a failed state that might be a breeding ground for extremist groups for many years to come. So the idea that it's in our interest to prolong this conflict for as long as possible strikes me as somewhat short-sighted, and we would be better off, as would our friends in the region, if we can bring this one to an end as quickly as possible. Mr. Walt, thank you so much. I'm sorry we are out of time. Thank you for being our guest today on France 24 and sharing your views with us. And please do stay tuned for more news on France 24 in English, in French, and in Arabic. Thank <laughs> you.